Good afternoon, folks. Freddy Bassett here, Beast of Fox. Good afternoon, folks. It's Freddy Bassett. This is Beast of Fox. This is coming on early today. We won't be on this evening. I wanted to discuss. Uh, Yesterday's special meeting, but we have time to digest it a bit as we begin with other individuals. Crazy meeting, right? It was another uh, crazy meeting, but that's what we've become used to here in the city of Yonkers. Yesterday, as you all know, uh, the city council had a special meeting they held uh, in regards to the threats made by Tasha Diaz towards Corazon Pineda Isaac. In that meeting, they uh, voted unanimously to remove Tasha Diaz from the role of majority leader. Automatically, John Rubo became the majority leader now. Uh, and I want to talk about that because we knew that that was going to be happening. We knew that John Rubo would become the next majority leader. We were talking about it. We knew that Tasha Diaz, you know, was going to lose it. But what we didn't know was that a resolution would be introduced in order to censor Corazon Pineda Isaac, the victim in this situation, the person who was on the receiving end of violent threats. We all know what those threats were. And uh, only because they were recorded did we see action taking place right because they were recorded it was put all over uh social media and various news outlets all the way in the uk and so something had to be done and they took action right the city council president decided some action needed to be done so she began making uh phone calls talking to people and uh and rubo also making phone calls to get this done so uh the new majority leader is now John Rubo. John Rubo was hoping to become the majority leader back in 2022 when Tasha Diaz was named the majority leader. And as I've mentioned many times before, we know why she was given that title, because she flipped on the housing ordinance in 2021. And for that, she was rewarded with the majority leader title, which gave her a leadership role, but also gave her more money. John Rubo at the same time was named the majority whip. And that was a compromise because he was hoping to become the next majority leader. So they had to compromise. They gave that to John Rubo. So John Rubo, you know, from what I was talking to people, he's uh, the guy that uh, they say does the dirty work, right? He's the one that Maranti said got, you know, worked the phones calling up other council members to agree to vote on this resolution to censor Corazon. Now, if you don't know, John Rubo used to be a Republican, but he switched parties in order to become more appealing, more viable of a candidate in hopes of one day becoming the mayor. But that hasn't been working out. John, I believe, was told to call up members of the council to negotiate as Lakeisha Collins Bellamy said, a deal where Tasha would lose the majority leader title and Corazon would be censored. But why was it the city council president making these calls? And why did it require the censorship of Corazon Pineda Isaac in order to get it done? This should have been automatic. Like this is unacceptable and we need to take action right away. The council yesterday seemed almost scared of Tasha. Why does she have so much power? They seem to have treaded lightly when voting her out of the position. They really didn't say much. I mean, not compared to the big deal that they made out of censoring Corazon, but none of the council members went up there and really said how wrong that was and how this was unacceptable and we will not allow it. Sure, Lakeisha Collins made a comment but she's the city council president. She had to, right? My Breen made a comment, but he was almost apologetic about having to vote Tasha out, right? He was, you know, saying, I'm fortunate we have to do this. I can't, you know, 
But he didn't say, you know what, this is wrong, Tasha. You were way out of line. You were way out of line. Many people wonder why did it get this far? And I wonder that myself. Why was it allowed to get this far? Why wasn't their action taken sooner? This was nothing new. They all knew about it. They should have nipped it in the bud. The city council president should have sat them down and said, we can't be having this division. We are the super majority, the Democratic caucus for women of color making history. We have to get along. We have to show unity. But the council has been divided from day one. The audio that was released by Corazon is almost a year old, actually. I had heard it probably about a year ago. And I have been anticipating this being released for a while now. I was even asking for a copy of it after hearing it. So why did they wait till after the elections? That's a question I have. Why did they not release this audio prior to Tasha Diaz getting reelected? It was in the hands of the people who were running against Tasha Diaz, people who were anti-Tasha Diaz and didn't want her to win. So why wasn't it released? Why did they hold on to it for so long, only releasing it now? Some are questioning the leadership of the city council president. I'm going to show uh, some video here. Why didn't she step in sooner? And more importantly, why did she allow John Rubo to further victimize Corazon Pineda Isaac by having, allowing him to introduce a resolution to censor Corazon? Some are saying a woman of color, the only Latina on the city council, the victim in all of this. Why was she censored? Let's take a listen. Majority Whip Rubo. Thank you, Council President. Um, I'm sorry, actually, you know what I want to play? Okay, we have a second item that um, my colleagues would like to add to the council, and I will entertain a motion from Councilman Rubo to add a, resolu a resolution to censor uh, Council Member Corazon Pineda Isaac to the agenda. I'd like to make that motion to add the resolution. Okay, and I have a second. Second. <laughs> okay, before we go into discussion, I will give the council member the floor. To so she allows this resolution to be entered by John Rubo, the new majority leader of the city council. So that is his first act as the new majority leader is to punish Corazon Pineda Isaac for speaking out. Not to condemn Tasha Diaz, not to further unite the council after all of this, but instead further dividing the council by introducing this resolution. And he talks about, we need to move forward and continue doing the great things for the city. But how can you do that when you're adding fuel to the fire? You're censoring the victim. You're a Democrat, she's a Democrat. Showing a division within the Democratic Party. Go to uh, uh, Lakeisha Collins Bellamy says, you know, it was a negotiation that's going to be her reason for allowing it. We had to negotiate in order to get all the council members behind voting Tasha Diaz out of the majority leadership role. They had to punish Corazon Pineda Isaac. But you're the leader. You're a woman, a woman of color. And you should have said, no, we're not going to further victimize this woman. I will not allow this. It's not necessary, right? She didn't do anything wrong. What are you guys concerned about? That she's gonna record some of the things that you're saying in these backroom deals? Is that what it is? Is that your biggest concern? Everyone should have been on board with removing Tasha 
without having to negotiate any deals. Those actions were unacceptable. And she should have been censored. Tasha Diaz needs to be censored. She needs to have tape put on her mouth, right? So how will this impact Lakeisha's re-election? Before I get into that, I want to show John Rubo. Give his reason for the resolution. As I said earlier, I do hope that after this evening, we can begin to move forward together. With that said, we are addressing some of the issues that have come before us um, that have played out in the press and in the public. And we've decided to act on one of those and we've changed um, the rules which reflect leadership. Also, in this situation, we find ourselves with one council member that had recorded another council member while the, the council member was behind a closed door having a conversation with staff. What we're doing here through this resolution is simply saying that we don't accept that, we don't condone that, and while the council also condemns the inappropriate language that was used in the tape that we all heard uh, and the conversation, we still believe that the council members especially have, while this is a public building, we do have a right to privacy in our offices, especially while the door is closed. We have a right to privacy in our office, especially while the door is closed. And council members and other city employees have a right to feel safe at work, have a right to be able to speak out about things that are happening to them without having retaliation. And this is retaliation by John Rubo and other council members, pure, uh, plain and simple. It's retaliation. He says that he condemns the recording. And while he condemns, uh, you know, Tasha Diaz, that council members have to feel like they have privacy in their office and conversations cannot be recorded. But he's talking about this as if Tasha and Brenton were just discussing you know, some legislation or discussing a private matter amongst themselves and Corazon just decided to record it and release it to embarrass them somehow or to hurt them politically totally negating the fact that these were threats. They weren't having a conversation. It was Tasha Diaz threatening Corazon Pineda Isaac, threatening with physical harm. And he keeps saying, you know, he condemns the language used. So how should she have said it? How should she have said, I'm going to slap the taste out of her mouth. I'm going to slit her throat. That would have been acceptable. It's not just the language that she used. It's not like she was cursing. It's not like she said the F word. It's not like she just called Corazon a B, which she has done also. She was threatening to slit her throat and to physically harm her. So you cannot try and downplay it, John, with your choice of words by saying you condemn the language used. No, you should condemn the threats that were made. Say it that way, John. Why are you protecting Tasha? Are you that scared of her? Are you scared of her, John? Are you scared that she's really going to F you up if you say anything wrong? Because it seems like, again, they were all walking on eggshells. Focusing solely on punishing Corazon. So how will this affect uh, Leticia, uh, Leticia, excuse me, sorry, Lakeisha's re-election campaign? She will be up for re-election next year. She is the leader of this silly council, as some people have called it. Her tenure has been stained with controversy from day one. Anyone running against her is going to have a laundry list of criticism against the city council president. First, there was the Mike Cater scandal, where the council voted to have an investigation launched against Mike Cater. And... Many of us 
And I know that that came from Lakeisha's campaign team. That was part of their strategy to win, to get Mike Cater out. Identity politics was also a strategy. They got a black woman because they didn't believe a white male or a white woman could beat Mike Cater. So when I mentioned race, race does play a part. It's a strategy to have these women of color on the council. Now, if they were independent, if they made decisions on their own and together without influence from outside sources who seek to benefit themselves, then it's one thing. But this is a strategy by those individuals, the handlers, to get women of color on the council, make it look good. And so they use Lakeisha to beat Mike Cater. He's an Arab man. You can't beat him with a white male or a white woman. You can do it with the black woman. And let's make this whole story of the first black city council president. So it's about race. They use race in this. Right. Then there's the accusation of the backroom deals that Lakeisha has allegedly made. Her husband becoming a Yonkers police officer. That was part of the deal. And eventually she would make her way into becoming a city court judge. This is something she brought up in a meeting once. So that's one thing that an opponent can attack. Did she make deals? Has she done what she done on the city council in order to get a judge position later on down the road? We see her husband has been hired by the YPD. That came to fruition. I mentioned it. And it happened. Also, she introduced the legislation all by herself to extend the term limits, something that most people in Yonkers did not want, regardless of how they try to spin it. She introduced it all by herself. And again, they tie that to the deals that she allegedly has made to get her husband on the force and get herself on the bench. Will she become a judge? And then there's been her leadership abilities, right? We've, we've seen too many times where city council meetings have gone haywire. You saw Tasha Diaz calling people beggars, Hector Santiago and his whole ordeal in the hallway of the council chambers. And all that was sparked, many say, by the city council president who took it upon herself to speak about personal matters, things that she was upset about, things that were bothering her, one of them being the fact that people were saying she has been making a deal for her husband to become a cop. She said he didn't need a job. He had a great career. He wasn't working in some trivial job like a grocery store clerk. And then she said that she wasn't going to become a judge, although that's her dream, but she's not going to become a judge. She didn't make a deal for that. That never happened. And so that sparked Tasha Diaz, who then ignited the entire room and all hell broke loose. But is that how you lead? Is that true leadership has she displayed true leadership while on the council during her tenure so how will all of this affect her re-election bid and let's not forget the vote to give themselves raises after the election they voted on themselves raises but they all knew about this because it had been budgeted early on in 2023 but no one none of the council members ever mentioned it even those that spoke in opposition did not say a word so they knew they were going to get these raises they were just waiting for the elections to be over and so this is a laundry list of things that anyone running against Lakeisha Collins Bellamy is going to hit on they're going to remind you of the fact that while she was there, 
She got her husband a job. She's working on securing herself a judgeship. She introduced legislation to extend terms. She gave herself a raise. She's voted on a bunch of zoning changes that have impacted communities throughout the city, regardless of the opposition that it has received. She's allowed the council to get to this, where council members are threatening to slit other council members' throats, something that's been going on for a while, and yet Lakeisha never once tried to nip it in the bud. So people are questioning her leadership. Can Bellamy win her reelection? And what about Corazon? She will also be up for reelection. What Tasha did was wrong, but why did she not come forward sooner? Why didn't she come out before Tasha was reelected? Maybe we could have gotten her out. The information was there. Why wait on it? Why sit? Why allow her to be reelected? Why now? Right? Why now? So these are questions that people are, are wondering. I've been talking to people about them. Just, you know, we like to di digest this, you know, and process it. Um, you know, following very closely. Shout out to everyone who's doing research. I appreciate it. Shout out to all my sources. Thank you very much. Those who watch and support. Those who uh, tell me they appreciate what I'm doing. Love the show. You know, are happy that I'm doing this. And uh, so thank you very much. And folks, I also mentioned. Um, I put a post up in regards to. Uh, judges Karen Best and. Um, very shocko. Now I'm getting information from sources. And again, I haven't verified this, so I'm working on it, but I do put things out there once I get it from multiple sources. That's just my my policy, you know, especially sources that have given me information in the past that have come to be true. You know, I, I will put it out there. And also I put it out there because there are people doing research. Other people are out there digging as well. And sometimes I like to put things out there because then I'll get some information from people who've looked into it for me. Um, so that's why I do that. But I don't know if it's, you know, 100 percent true, but I have been hearing about this. I have had complaints from residents in the city of Yonkers in regards to illegal evictions. Now, I'm not saying that very or Karen Best are involved with this illegal uh, evictions, but. They were judges that were named by some of these people that were giving complaints so that were in reaching out to me. And there's even some complaints on Nextdoor app. You can see a woman there who uh, is uh, talking about her illegal eviction and what happened to her belongings and uh, the judges and the attorneys that were involved. So uh, a source, uh, um, again, has reached out to me in regards to the two judges saying that uh, they, because of complaints, they are under some investigation and have been removed from the bench. Uh, I'm, again, I'm verifying this. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, uh, um, sure on this. But again, I go off you know, multiple sources and information that I have. Uh, but again, I do want to stress that it has not been 100% confirmed. But again, if there's anyone out there that has more information on this, please reach out to me at politicwithfred at gmail.com. Again, it's politicwithfred at gmail.com. And it's not, look, it's not personal. Uh, you know, I don't e even with like Tasha Diaz or any of them, it's not personal. Right. But we need accountability. We need transparency and we need people to, you know, stay on top of our officials. And, you know, many of us know what's going on. OK, I mean, listen, we're not coming up with, you know, we're not creating lies here. We see it. We know what's going on. It's become more obvious become more in your face. And as more people talk about it, more people are learning about it, more people are starting to be educated on what's actually going on. And someone even thanked me very recently for exposing the underbelly of the city of Yonkers, things that they never knew. And they appreciate what I'm doing and they follow the page now. So, you know, we want good government. We want transparent government, government that works for the people, that's by the people not by a few select individuals who are wealthy and powerful and very influential. And they have been influencing politics here in Yonkers for a very long time, from judges 
to council members, to county legislators, assemblymen and women, right? They have been influencing these positions here. And with that influence comes a, you know, form of control. And they get to dictate how government goes, what legislation is introduced, what legislation is passed, what zoning changes are made. You know, and that's important because that impacts the people. And when they control it, it doesn't matter what we say, what we feel, how it impacts us. It matters how it will impact their pockets. If they stand to make money, then they're going to move forward with it. And our council, who's supposed to be the check and balance, is supposed to say, no, we're not going to approve these zoning changes because they are going to make a negative impact to the people who are living there, are not doing their job. Instead, this is what we're seeing. Ghetto ratchetness, threats of using knives and slapping people, completely distracting us from what's truly important and what we need to be focused on. And so this is why I do, and this is why I put out the information. And we know, you know, I know with Vera Shackle specifically, her campaign team, same as the Tasha Diaz campaign team, same as the Deanna Robinson campaign team, same as the individuals that uh, worked on John Rubo's campaign. You see what I'm saying? It's a monopoly on these officials. That's all I'm saying. And there's a lot there that we need to be looking at. Romario, what's going on, brother? How you doing? So that's why I do this. You know, uh, it's very important for the people to know about this. You know, but it's really important that we start to understand who are the individuals in the background? Who are the wizards behind the curtain? Because we can get Tasha Diaz out. We can get that other individual out. But if these individuals remain behind the curtain, they're just going to put someone else in to replace Tasha. And they're still going to move forward with what it is that they want to do. So we have to uh, be very much aware of these individuals, right? The individuals that Tasha was trying to give a no-bid contract to, the individuals that were controlling Sam Borelli, right, that were involved in that whole building department scandal, so anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. Have a beautiful weekend. God bless. Uh, Sunday, uh, I'm going to have a good uh, show on Sunday. I have um, a guest coming on. Uh, well, I have two two different guests. I'm trying to – actually, three. So I'm trying to see which one is going to work out. But I will be having a guest to discuss more politics, more of what's going on here in the city of Yonkers. Um, so, again, stay tuned. I'm Freddie Vasquez. If you have any information, please don't hesitate to email me. Politic with Fred at gmail.com. Politic with Fred at gmail.com. Be blessed.